It seems recording and I'm just going to share my screen with everyone. Morning, everybody. Uh, we'll call the meeting to order now. It's about to six minutes after 10. Uh, in the open session, board members, staff, staff guests, and members of the public are reminded that the full authority board and committee meeting is being recorded and will be posted to the authority's website along with the official written minutes. As such, comments and opinions expressed may be published and any comments expressed by individual board members, guests, and the general public are their own and do not represent the opinions or comments of the full authority and or the KCTA board of directors. The recorded video of the full authority meeting is not considered the official record of the meeting. The official record of the full authority meeting shall consist solely of the minutes approved by the authority. Uh, we're going to start off with uh, introductions and declarations of pecuniary interest. So in lieu of introductions, Elizabeth, Elizabeth is going to do a little call. Mr. Chair, uh, Dennis Kravitz. Here. Dominique Javier. Present. Stephen Harvey. Here. Jim Herbert. Jim Herbert. Jim, if you can unmute yourself. Okay, I'm good now. I'm unmuted. I was muted and didn't know it. So yes, present, I'm here. Thank you. Thank you. Grant Jones. Present. Bill Mackey. Bill Mackey. Here. Pete Peters. Yes. Elizabeth Pelosa. I believe is absent. Allison Morwick. Present. Ralph Winfield. Present. Mr. Chair, we have nine out of ten members, and just for the benefit of the public, uh, we have a new member, Jim Herbert, from the city of St. Thomas, replacing Joe Press. And uh, official welcome to you, Jim. It's nice to have you aboard. So uh, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we have no hearings today. So here we are off to the uh, um, off to the minutes of the meeting of June seventeenth. Seems so long ago and far away. Um, we need to. You've all had a chance to uh, review those minutes. Uh, and uh, what we're looking for are any corrections, if not, then a recommendation that the minutes of the June 17th, 2024 authority meeting be approved. Peters will move. Thank you. Winfield will second. Okay, thank you. And we're doing uh, oral votes again. Dennis Kravitz? Yes. Javier? Yes. Herbert? Yes. Jones? Yes. Mackey? Yes. Peters? Yes. Warwick? Yes. Winfield? Yes. Harvey? Yes. And that motion passes, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you. And then under matters arising, we have the media report. Uh, do we have anything we want to highlight from that? Mr. Chair, just a couple of things. Uh, Betsy was able to uh, receive an additional $15,000 to go to wetland formations uh, this summer. So that was fabulous news and a number of uh, additional great projects on the landscape. If I may, Mr. Chair, I'll go right into project tracking and some of the other highlights sure, of these absolutely. informational reports. Next slide, Marianne. Uh, Marianne's uh, launched some Google ad grants, um, which gives us free ad code ads on Google. The Dale of Dam uh, project is underway. 
for the geotechnical investigations, both stability assessment and staff have also been contracted to spray curbside of Port Stanley sewage lagoons. And uh, through another funding success this summer, we were able to hire a lands and trails technician uh, through career launcher wage subsidy. And this position will uh, give a lot of field support into the fall as we undertake the first water trail and the significant rehab of the Dalewood Reservoir Trail. Next slide. I'll let Jen just briefly touch on the September watershed conditions report. Um, so just in over the last couple of months, um, the water levels in Lake Erie have been slowly dropping, uh, which has been nice to see. Um, the water levels throughout the watershed are quite low, but that's just due to um, you know lower amounts of rain over the uh, summer. Um, we've extended our shoreline condition for Lake Erie uh, to the end of September, and I imagine it will be continued again for the for October. Um, and as an interesting uh, monitoring um, event in August, we were doing uh, electric fishing survey for municipal drains. Uh, we did see uh, two sensitive species. One is rainbow trout down in Mill Creek and Port Stanley, and the other is uh, the golden red horse, which was found in a couple of agricultural grains in the upper Pillow water uh, shed. Actually, thank you. Um, so we have one Any questions at all, Ford? Marianne, can we have the next slide with that motion? Oh, sorry, one more operational report for information. I'll let Joe speak to this one. Uh, thank you. So the, the camping season this year, um, subject to the restrictions we've had to implement through COVID-19, the board may recall we're, we're operating at half capacity, but certainly the, the campsites that we have had open all summer um, have been relatively full on weekends. So it has been a, I guess, successful year subject to the, the, the less capacity we're offering. But um, as a result of the loss of camping that occurred in May and part of June uh, due, to the, due to the pandemic, uh, we've decided to extend the camping season until October 18th. So that was something that was previously arranged for our seasonal campers, but due to some interest that we've been having, we decided to leave it open for transient camping as well. So um, we are seeing some good reservations coming in and hopefully we'll continue to see some additional revenue come in with that, uh, with that extension of the season until October 18th. Excellent. Good. Good news. Question, Peters? Yes. Uh, thanks, Mr. Chair. I have a question regarding the uh, watershed conditions report. I've noticed on a couple trips north out of the city, um, the the algae bloom at Kettle Creek and Ron McNeil at points, the, the creek is like green there. And then as well, crossing the Dalewood Bridge, you can start to see different blooms forming. Is is I've seen that in previous years, but... The, the my observation, particularly at Ron McNeil's, that I, I don't recall ever seeing it that green. I'm just curious if there's any comment uh, regarding uh, those algae blooms. Thank you. Thank you. Um, through to uh, the chair, um, the water levels this year have just been extremely low. And, um, I mean, we do see uh, algae and sometimes uh, duckweed, which is like a floating little green plant on the surface as well. So. Um, you do see both of those down in those areas. I did notice that if you cut the hill you know, down the other day, that there seems to be a little bit more green, but it's kind of a, a seasonal thing for, for that area. There's not a lot of flow right now, so the, the water is not moving as much, and that stuff is collecting. So it'll hopefully move along when we have um, a nice rain, but um, it, it, I don't see it as a, a major concern at the moment it's a seasonal situation okay thanks steve uh any other questions at all about those reports hearing none i have a motion in front of me that the staff reports under matters rising a through d be received looking for a mover and second jones okay thank you herbert would second it okay thanks jim any comments Okay, a vote, Elizabeth? On the motion, Kravitz? Yes. Javier? Yes. Herbert? Yes. 
Jones? Yes. Matthew? Yes. Peters? Yes. Warwick? Yes. Winfield? Yes. Harvey? Yes. And that motion passes, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you very much. Under correspondence, we have a number of items there, A through H. You had a chance to read those letters and memos, uh, both to and from folks in the government. Any questions about any of those at all? Hearing none, uh, let's just take the recommendation then that the correspondence be received. Travis, moot. Okay, Dennis moves it. G. Garrell, second. Okay, somebody seconds it. The motion, credits. Yes. Pierre. Yes. Herbert. Yes. Jones. Yes. Mackey. Yes. Peters. Yes. Warwick. Yes. Winfield. Yes. Harvey. Yes. And that motion passes. Okay, thank you very much. And now to the dollars and cents statement of revenue and expenses. Here the statements were forwarded out in the advance package. Just noting that you'll see the revenue from the campgrounds is about 50% of what we budgeted, but we expected that because, as Joe just mentioned, we're uh, operating at about 50% capacity. Um, the staff are monitoring expenses um, basically daily uh, to make it through this pandemic, and so far, I would say. Uh, that we're looking, um, at least in the campgrounds, hopefully to break even, uh, probably a little bit of a deficit on the overall year. But uh, considering what we've had to deal with this year, I think the statements are in good shape at this time. Okay, thank you. So we have a recommendation that the statements of revenue and expenditures dated August 31st be approved. Moved Warwick. Okay, moved by Allison. Seconded by Ralph. Seconded by Ralph. Any comments or other questions before we do the vote? Okay, thank you. On the motion, Kravitz? Yes. Javier? Yes. Herbert? Yes. Jones? Yes. Mackey? Yes. Peters? Yes. Warwick? Yes. Winfield? Yes. Harvey? Yes. And that motion passes as well. Okay, thank you, folks. And new business under new business A administrative bylaw update electronic meetings. So, Mr. Chair, um, basically, back in April, we updated the administrative bylaws based on a minister's direction to allow for electronic meetings. At the time, that update concentrated really on allowing electronic meetings during um, municipal and provincial emergencies. But what we're finding now is as the provincial emergency is lifted, uh, I believe that most of our member municipalities are still under um, municipal emergencies. But if those were lifted, that would limit our ability to meet electronically. And as this pandemic continues, I think there will still be the need to have um, at least member participation in electronic meetings, um, if not an entire meeting that's held electronically. So what we were preparing in the advanced uh, package was to make that move to allow for electronic meetings and that members participating electronically would be still counted towards forum. Uh, this week, we did receive, and I included that in an email yesterday and posted it on the website as well, we did receive ministerial direction to go ahead with that um, change to our bylaws to allow for participation in electronic meetings outside of declared emergencies. So um, I believe uh, you'll see the changes were uh, tracked in red in the advanced packages. I tried to keep it very simple just by removing the sections on electronic um, electronic meetings and emergencies uh, and just referring to electronic meetings, but um, maintaining the protocols that we had in place for electronic meetings. 
Any questions at all, folks, about that? Mr. Chair, uh, maybe. Go ahead. Sorry, is that Dominique? Uh, yeah. If I may, Mr. Chair, just a clarification, because uh, I think on page 60, uh, it talks about uh, during any period where an emergency has been declared to exist. So it, that statement is there a couple of times. So I was wanting to clarify when we would make the option of, uh, of participating electronically, um, either as a delegation or as a board member or uh, so that's the part that's not clear okay. to me. Okay. Um, if I'm understanding Dominique's question correctly, um, so the last two paragraphs under um, section 10 on page 60 uh, does still refer to an emergency. Those sections uh, do say that under remaining in an emergency situation, the general membership uh, could delay or postpone until such time as the general membership can reasonably address the issue either by meeting in person or meeting electronically. I guess I left those sections in to still give the um, flexibility to the board if they so chose under an emergency that they could delay elements of business until they felt that they could address it. You can certainly remove those two sections if you find it confusing, and we just leave it um, that electronic meetings can be held. Any other yeah, thoughts? I'm, I'm wondering if, if there are other uh, thoughts, and because my follow-up question is, so let's say there's no emergency, there's no pandemic, we're just back to regular business how do we decide as a board or as, how does the chair decide whether the electronic option is available? Is it going to be available at all times by default? Uh, what, what is going to be our uh, decision-making process? Yeah, Dominic, that's a good question. We didn't necessarily uh, talk about that. Um, from my perspective, it was that always an electronic participation by a member was possible. Um, so, for instance, there is a meeting earlier in the year where you couldn't attend in person, but you want you um, at that time participated electronically. At that time, the way our bylaws were were written, you could participate electronically, but you weren't weren't counted towards quorum. What we're trying to achieve with this is that we would be counted towards form. Okay, thank you. So in other words, the, the electronic option will be available all the time. That I, I guess it would be up to even a delegation or a hearing or a board member to communicate that in advance to ensure that the logistics are available. That's correct. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Bill, did you have a question? Uh, no, it is a grant that. Uh, oh, sorry, grant does? Okay. Uh, no, I just, uh, I think this is just the natural progression of uh, what our meetings, uh, no matter whether it's municipal or uh, uh, boards, uh, is going to take in the future. And uh, uh, I support it. Now I'll move the uh, motion to adopt. Okay, thank you. So we have a motion to adopt this. Warwick seconding. Okay. Seconded by Allison? Yeah. Thank you, Allison. Any comments, any other questions at all? Okay, so the recommendation is that the recommended changes to Kettle Creek Conservation Authority's administrative bylaw be approved. Okay. On the motion, credits? Yes. Javier? Yes. Herbert? Yes. Jones? Yes. Mackey? Yes. Peters? Yes. Warwick? Yes. Winfield? Yes. Harvey? Yes. And that motion passes, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Self-insured short-term disability amendment that was presented earlier in the year. 
I'm just going to wait for the screen here. Mr. Chair, the, the short sure. of this is that we approved that amendment to our personnel policy um, earlier in the year. Uh, in order, it needs to um, be reviewed by Service Canada. Uh, it was reviewed and there were some minor deficiencies identified mainly around when we would not pay an employee um, when they're outside of Canada. And so I verbatim taken what the recommendation was from Service Canada. Uh, and added it into our personnel policy. And they're simply asking for approval and we'll resubmit it to service in that. Okay, questions? Okay, the recommendation is that the amendment to personnel policy PP08, employee benefits be approved, but for a mover and second. Mackey moved. Sorry, was that Bill Mackey? Yes. Closable second. Okay. Hi, Elizabeth. Nice to see you. Good morning. So, on the motion, credit? Yes. Chair? Yes. Herbert? Yes. Jones? Yes. Mackey? Yes. Peters? Yes. Loza? Yes. Warwick? Yes. Midfield? Yes. Harvey. Yes. And that motion passes. Okay, thank you. Uh, COVID-19 update, office re-entry plan and face covering policy. Elizabeth, do you want to touch on this at all? Mr. Chair, both policies, both the office re-entry plan and the face covering policy have been vetted numerous times uh, through staff. Both documents will continue to be updated as we work through uh, the pandemic and continue to get direction from the provincial government and our health units. Um, the work from home agreement, uh, as was mentioned in the advance report, um, through consultation with the chair, those agreements were extended to September 30th. Um, and the staff have introduced a cohort system. And if I could just have the next slide here again, I think there's a screenshot of what it looks like. Um, so we split, right now we split this staff uh, into two teams and both teams are capable of running um, the programs of the authority. Uh, specifically, we separated them with uh, the flood forecasting in mind. Um, and this is based on a scenario if any one member had a close contact uh, with the virus or had to self-isolate or quarantine. Um, that it wouldn't affect possibly the whole staff and uh, not allow us to continue service to the public. Um, so we're rotating through those two core hopes with uh, time in the office and continued time at home. And it would be staff's recommendation uh, that we have the flexibility to continue that um, till the end of the year. In, again, in consultation with the chair, if numbers remain low, that maybe that's not a level of um, uh, precaution that we need to take and we can switch to having the full staff back in the office. But um, from a staff's perspective, managing uh, this, I would like that flexibility uh, to extend those work from home agreements to the end of December, uh, maintain the cohort system for now until we get through uh, September and then constantly be reevaluating it with the chair and with, with the information at uh, hand as to how many staff we have in the office. We can see from today, uh, from some of the screenshots, we have uh, three staff member and the chair uh, in the boardroom, and we're just uh, playing around with some technology uh, to hopefully get uh, more staff in the office for meetings like this, uh, but as well as welcoming back more board members uh, for in-person meetings or um, kind of a dual meeting where we have some people present in the boardroom and some people still joining um, electronically. Okay. Any questions at all? Personally, I see it as being a creative way of making sure that we always have someone in charge. No comments? Okay, so the recommendation 
is that the, the office reentry plan and face covering policy be approved, recognizing that both documents will be updated by staff based on ongoing direction from the provincial government, Southwestern Public Health, and the London Middlesex Health Unit, and further, that the work from home agreements be extended from September 30 to December 31 as presented. I would so move. Okay, so Winfield. Kravitz, second. Peters. Okay. So on the motion, Kravitz. Yes. Jigier. Yes. Herbert. Yes. Jones. Yes. Mackey. Yes. Peters. Yes. Loza. Yes. Warwick. Yes. Winfield. Yes. Harvey. Yes. And that motion passes. Okay, thank you. Okay, item D, budget 2021 review and approval. There's a, some timelines in front of you there. Mr. Chair, this is just recognizing that last year I know we prepped uh, a four-year budget plan. Um, obviously, there's going to be changes to that. So I've um, outlined basically a schedule that I think we can work through that and get um, uh, both staff looking uh, at how we can uh, trim up our budget uh, for next year and how the pandemic is going to affect uh, those projections and get it back in front of the board for a thorough discussion before we look at approval on February 17th. Okay, questions about that, folks? Okay, seeing none, a recommendation that the budget 2021 review and approval process be approved. Move or by. Close up. Jones second. Jones second. So on the motion, credits. Yes. Figure. Yes. Herbert. Yes. Jones. Yes. Mackey. Yep. Peters. Yes. Loza. Yes. Warwick. Yes. Winfield. Yes. Harvey. Yes. And not much Okay, our July, August, September planning and regulations report. Joe. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, in your advanced packages was a summary of planning act applications that have been reviewed and supported by staff, as well as the section 28 permits that have been issued at the staff level uh, since the last time the board met. met. Uh, I'm happy to answer any questions if the members have any. Uh, if not, we're just looking for the report to be received. Okay, any questions at all? Steve, do you have a question? No? Okay. So the motion that the September 2020 planning and regulations activity report be received. Moved by? Warwick. Seconded by? Winfield. Okay, thank you. So on the motion, Kevin? Yes. Chigier? Yes. Herbert? Yes. Jones? Yes. Mackey? Yes. Peters? Yes. Loza? Yes. Warwick? Yes. Winfield? Yes. Harvey? Yes. And that motion passes. Okay. So we've gone through our full authority agenda, folks. It's now time for our closed session. Mr. Chair, just sorry to interrupt. Just oh. before we get that under new business, with Joe Preston stepping down from the board, we do have a vacancy on the executive committee. Okay. So we need to fill Joe Preston's spot on the executive committee. Do we have anyone who is uh willing to do we need our nomination for that or simply volunteer um i'm suggesting because of the electronic nature if we had a volunteer that might that was acceptable to the rest of the members okay. that might make it a little easier sure okay so i'm looking for a volunteer mr president leaves large shoes but i'm sure we can handle it i'll volunteer 
Okay, there's Allison. Allison's already on and on. Well, that's what I thought. No. <laughs> so the, mem the members on the executive are Harvey Jones, um, Mackie, and Warwick. I will volunteer. Dominique. Okay, thank you. Anyone else willing to volunteer as well? Seeing none, okay. So, uh, Dominique then replacing Joe. So, can we just have a motion to that? So, okay, so uh, we need a motion to approve. Dominique being uh, named to the executive committee. I'll make that motion. Sorry? I'll say. Bill. Okay. Did you get the So I heard Bill Mackey moved and Grant Jones seconded. So on the motion, credits. Yes. Jim Gare? Yes. Uh, Jim Herbert? Yes. Jones? Yes. Mackie? Yes. Peters? Yes. Loza? Yes. Warwick? Yes. Enfield? Yes. Harvey? Yes. And that motion passes. Okay, thank you. So yeah, to those executive members, I'll be sending out an invite for October 7th. If there's problems with that, then we may need to reschedule, but um, I'll send that invite out this afternoon. Okay, with that in mind, um, let me go up here. Next whole authority meeting is scheduled for October 21st. We'll do that at the end, right? Yeah, that's just okay. So let's we need a motion to move into closed session. Warwick. Allison moved. Jiguer. Seconded and on the motion credits. Yes. Pierre. Yes. Herbert. Yes. Joan. Yes. Mackie. Yes. Peters. Yes. Loza. Yes. Warwick. Yes. Winfield. Yes. Harvey. Yes. And we move it into poll session at 1039. Okay. And so, we just want so, to then, so the, this will end the recording, okay. and um, those members will have your numbers to join the discussion on your line. Okay, so we'll talk to you in about uh, five minutes. Okay, thank you. So, Elizabeth or, or Chair, Mr. Chair, I'll probably leave then if I'm only going to be available for five minutes. And I'm going to get back to Elizabeth after just to get a quick update, just what was happening. So, so sorry about that, but thank you very much for the opportunity to become involved. And uh, I won't disappoint you. I, I work hard at what I do, and it'll take me a while to get on board, but I'll be happy to, to do that work. So, anyway, thank you very much. Thank you, Jim. Nice meeting you. Thanks. Thanks, Elizabeth. Thank you.